someone to spend my life, mending broken people, I want to spend my <laughs> Welcome to Three Men Today cooking show with Curtis and Paul Aiken. So, Paula and Curtis, your, your name is first. That's so, right. Yeah. So, Paula and Curtis Aiken. That's right. So, you're the lead, and I'm kind of like your backup. I'm your assistant. Are you my assistant? If you let me be. Okay. We'll see how all that goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, this program is actually called Gluten Free and Delicious. Gluten-free uh -huh. and delicious. And delicious because it is so much talk going on out there now about gluten. Is it good? Is it bad? Why is it so high? We're going to answer those kind of questions on this show today. Is everybody gluten-free? Gluten the gluten whole free world and delicious. gluten-free. So we're doing gluten because also when people think about gluten, they say, mm-mm, that ain't going to taste right. Yeah. So or it's too much money. It would cost too much money. So we're well, you know, we did a program on Abundant Living, uh, I remember. All back, wasn't it? Gluten for punishment. Gluten for punishment. Gluten for punishment. Well, that's a little bit different, but we're going to have some education and also cooking as well. Yeah, this is going to be a good, a good show. You're going to like it. Somebody asked me a question once. They said, um, you know, I was trying to get your cookbook, and um, I was just wondering, do you have any gluten-free recipes in there? And, you know, I, I kind of chuckled a little bit inside because that gluten thing is so bad until when you go in the store, you will see the word gluten-free on everything. Gluten-free water. Come on. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I saw gluten-free gluten water. Gluten-free water. I saw gluten-free fruit. Apples. Like no carb water. No fat water. I mean, just... It's crazy. It's crazy. So I said, yes. Probably gluten-free dog food. I bet you. Oh, that's out there. No, yeah. I, I actually saw that. Okay. I saw that. I saw that. Well, you know, let's look at our, our gluten-free It delicious. is a multi-billion dollar industry. What are we going to be doing today? Oh, what are we going to be doing today? That. Okay, we're doing a fresh mango salsa. Mm. Then we're going to do a penne, a rage, um, tomato toss. Okay. And then we're going to do grilled zucchini and sauteed onions. Mm. And we are going to end with fresh summer fruit kebab. Oh, a little kebab, all right? Oh, gluten free. No, I said summer. Not winter, but summer. You have to do summer. it in the summertime. Well, I said summer because summer is out there somewhere, and she's taping us. Oh, this a person named Summer? Yeah. Really? For real. Behind the camera. Yeah. Okay, I knew that too. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. All right, so uh, kebabs, all gluten free, but it's also delicious. Why are they all gluten free? And so let's let's talk for a moment about that before I do the actual re uh, recipe okay. itself. You know, um, what is going on with this? You know, it has started before. We, mm -hmm. we had heard about maybe ten years ago. They kind of started this uproar about the whole gluten situation, mm -hmm. and now it's actually just out there. It's all over the place, and all right. even your main. Um, um, companies are now jumping in on the bandwagon where it used to just be certain people would do gluten. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing it even larger. Yeah. So what, what is going on with this gluten? Well, first of all, it actually started back in the 1980s, uh, years ago. And uh, so it, you have celiac disease. Mm. It's about 1% of the population, 1.8 million people. Celiac disease, where uh, if a person eats wheat, barley, or rye, those are three grains, uh, the endosperm, that protein in those grains, if they ingest it, it attacks, the autoimmune system is triggered to attack the lining of the small intestines. Mm. And this can happen based on genetics, either mother or father, and uh, it can really uh, wreak havoc in the system. And uh, so when it attacks the uh, lining of the intestines, then we do not absorb those nutrients that we need. And so uh, uh, if a person has that, really the close relatives need to be also tested as well. And the gold standard is really have an endoscopy, go down to the stomach and mm -hmm. take a biopsy or do a dental. 
a small portion of uh, the small intestines to see whether or not uh, you all definitely have a uh, celiac disease. Uh, blood tests can be conclusive. Uh, to, some antigens can be tested too in the blood test, but um, uh, a biopsy or endoscopy is the gold standard for us, uh, determining whether or not a person really has celiac disease. That's now 1%. 1%. Okay. okay. That's but celiac disease. Okay, you're saying 1%, but what I'm seeing also, or what I'm hearing a lot, is I'm hearing a lot of people say that they are all gluten intolerant. And so okay, now that's, that's that, a different so, thing. So we got, so, so that, there's a gluten intolerant and there's a celiac, and is there a difference between the two? Yeah, now, so celiac disease, again, you've been diagnosed with celiac disease. Right. All right? Now, for those who, let's say, have not been diagnosed with celiac disease, based on biopsy or blood test, whatever, and don't have a wheat allergy, but still have symptoms when they take in gluten, now we have a different term. Mm. It's called medically non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Ooh, that's a lot of words. Say All it right? again. Or Say sometimes again. people okay. known as gluten intolerance. Okay. So okay. if you're not diagnosed with uh, celiac disease, mm -hmm. you don't have a wheat allergy, but when you take in gluten, barley, rye, and uh, wheat, you still have an allergic reaction or some symptoms, yes. then you have what is called non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And that group is mat uh, really estimated up to 6%, oh, okay. up to 60%. Okay. And that's the boom of this non-celiac uh, gluten sensitivity. And uh, it's, it's all over the place. Um, and I mean, it can really wreak havoc in the system because you're talking about uh, if left unchecked, uh, those who take in gluten, you have uh, abdominal bloating, cramping, and fatigue, and uh, osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're mm -hmm. talking about the sensitivity to gluten as well. So, um, and that cannot be done by a, a biopsy. Okay. About 50%, give or take. It cannot be done conclusively with a blood test, about 50%, give or take. So really, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Okay. When you... Oh, Exclude mm -hmm. celiacs, exclude wheat allergy, so what you have is non celiac gluten sensitivity. So by just simply avoiding gluten, mm -hmm. a lot of individuals uh, fare to be a lot better with the uh, uh, lessening of those abdominal uh, symptoms. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. one of the recipes we're fixing, the very first one, because we're talking about gluten-free and delicious. Okay. And this is definitely a gluten-free one, all right? And not only for a person who might have mm -hmm. a problem with celiacs or yeah. gluten, but also we can all eat it. Oh, everybody. everybody, everybody, everybody. All right. Okay, okay. Let's look at the very first recipe, which is okay. our actual salsa. Okay, this is fresh mango salsa. It calls for one and a half cups of mango peeled and chopped, one and a half cups of tomatoes chopped, uh, two tablespoons of fresh cilantro minced, two tablespoons of fresh lime juice, one tablespoon of banana peppers seeded and chopped, one teaspoon of fresh ginger peeled and minced, one fourth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, which is optional, and three cups of your favorite corn tortilla chips. Okay, all right. Corn. Because see, we're talking about that now. We're talking about the celiacs. We're talking gluten about free. that. Gluten free. Gluten free. Okay, so one of the objects or one of the things they can actually eat is corn. Okay. One more thing I need to add too, because sometimes it's the grain called oats. Yes. And there's some pros and cons as far as what a person can actually eat oats. Oats has about 10% about gluten. So those who have sick disease really cannot take oats. Some can. Okay. So it's a toss-up between the oats, but uh, in a lot of cases, oats uh, is not problematic. Mm -hmm. Anyway, well, this, have, this have oats, now, this it has is, mango. Yeah, this is a mango salsa. I've made all kinds of mangoes. So I've had okay. avocado salsas and tomato salsas, and I've had uh, cherry tomato and, and um, um, cantaloupe uh, salsas, and this is a mango. Mm -hmm. So I like the different flavors, yes. different types of salsas out there, and oh, you th have this the almighty ready. real ready-to-go mm. mango. Oh, okay? yes, yes. So I'm going to have you do the pleasure of actually getting that cut up, you know? So you can people, try that knife right there. Now, the there. people in the Carib uh, Caribbean and also Caribbean, both <laughs> places, they say this was the fruit in the Garden of Eden, the mango. Well, so I, that, that's debatable, but that's what they say. Well, I know one thing. It tastes very good, <laughs> tastes so I would not good. be surprised. Okay. Right, so, I'm so you're going to go ahead up, and honey. slice that up and try that knife there and see. And as you're doing that, cutting okay. it down, so you're going to cut it down both of the sides first. All right. All the way down, and that does not want to look like it's going to do it. This couldn't even cut melted let's butter. That one. Okay, let's, there we go. Let's, let's try the real McCoy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, okay. Okay, you're going to do both of those sides there, yeah. and you're going to go ahead on and cut that for us. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead on and put into the bowl. This is the tomatoes. This is a you want this in a diced? You're going to dice it. Dice it? So you okay. Know, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put the tomatoes in. Gluten-free water. I saw that. Okay, now. I saw that. Now, you know, you have to really be kind of, that's, that's, okay, getting, that's, that's getting going a little bit too far now. It's getting a little deep. It's getting a little deep. deep. Okay. You know, and let, let me say this, folks. Um, Gluten-free does not mean free of gluten. That's right. That is true. Um, you know, the FDA, it has to be certified on the container. Uh, the chunk had to be smaller, baby. Oh. It's too big. This is going to be chunk it. Oh, wait just a cut minute. It, just cut it in half a little let bit me, more. Let me... Let me do it this way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's going to be a little too, you know. That, 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 those, those are just a little bit too big. A little bit too big. Mmm. Oh, yeah. And delicious. Oh, mm -hmm. and, well, in that case, I'll just eat half of it. Okay. There we go. Yummy, yummy. How about that, honey? Mm hmm. A little bit that's smaller? A little bit smaller, you go. Oh. Okay. All right. So you're going to put that in. I'm just actually going to go ahead on and do the, um, the pepper. This is just banana pepper. I'm just going to cut it up real small pieces. The banana pepper, because you don't want too hot, because you know I'm getting ready to add to it. Yeah, I'm going to add cayenne pepper, which is optional. Okay, it is optional. Make this a little bit smaller Make it here. smaller to start off with. There you go. Now, how did this recipe come about, honey? Well, you know, like I said, I could do all kind of recipes, especially salsas, and uh, they go really good. They're low-calorie item, um, and you can make it different flavors. I don't like the same flavors all the time, and right. so this, this comes in really handy. Okay. A salsa recipe, which right. is uh -huh. using mango. Mango. Mango, wow. mango. Isn't that pretty? It's also mm. pretty. You're also pretty, too. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, put that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I can still work and talk at the same time. I don't think so. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> mm hmm. Uh huh. Now, you know, I'm glad that. Um, I'm glad that Curtis is doing this on a set like this because at home, Why is that? Mean, you know, really a truth, a lot of meat still left over in that side of that skin. Well, so, see, now know, what I will do, but since we're on camera here, I'm putting in the. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. Be nice. Yes. You know you'll get a phone call. You know you will. You know you will. Okay, I'm going to go ahead on while you're doing that. Let me just. Um, is that just enough? Maybe over here. Um, give me a little bit. Just take the, some of the sides off of that. Okay. okay. Take some of that side off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead on. And I'm gonna do get the ginger, get the ginger ready. And this is really good when you talk about putting the ginger in. I used to grade the ginger up, but I found that I like to have chunks of the ginger in this recipe. So I'm mincing it up real fine, you know, mm -hmm. real fine. And that goes in. You smell that smell? Yes, Does it I smell do. good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ginger. So when you're eating this, you get the opportunity to have the mango. You get the tomato, you get cilantro. Ooh, look at that. Mm, okay, yummy, this is getting kind of messy here. I know, that's okay. Let me do it Just this don't throw way. it away. So, yeah, there you go. You're doing good. Well, you're off camera. This. I'm going to eat all of that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think that's, that's enough right there, right, honey? Okay, that's enough. Okay. Let me cut this up a little bit. Yeah, just flip it there a little bit. Yeah, okay, I'm going to put in oh, that's appealing. the ginger. Okay. So okay, the, we ginger. Got the ginger in there. And you're going to have to, why don't you take this, honey, why don't you take that and move that back there, because we're going to finish doing the rest of oh, this. Oh, okay. Just sit that back in the back. You smell that ginger? Oh, yeah. Got that fresh ginger going. I'm going to give you this knife again here, because you're going to go ahead on and I get the rest of all that ginger in there. Fresh ginger. Fresh ginger. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take that okay. cilantro. Now, cilantro, cilantro is what really makes a salsa come is to life. in here? No, you're going to sl slice it up, baby. Oh. Dice it, mince it. It's supposed to be minced. Oh, okay. Okay. No, okay, hold up, hold up, hold I'm up. not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really and truly when you're trying to get oh, it Oh, put down. in a little ball. Mm -hmm. A little ball like that, and then do it. Mm. So you get that. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to let you hold that piece there, this, and there you go. Okay, I think okay. I can do that. You can do that. There you go. There okay. you go. Oh. Somebody asked a question one time, they said, um, does Curtis cook? <laughs> and uh, and Curtis always says, "Why do I need to cook I don't when have Paula to. does it all?" Yeah. So you know, it's really kind of funny. He does cook, but basically, I do most of the cooking. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're gonna put that all in there. And you notice that I said that, that we had cayenne pepper. Mm -hmm. Oh, it had a little okay. kick to it, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
And this one here, he put a little bit of that cayenne. So it's just, just one fourth of a teaspoon going in. And that is going to make it a little hot, a little spicy. You don't have to put it in there if you don't want to. And we're going to end with our fresh lime juice. Okay. I can see that's gonna. It's gonna be good. Yeah, good salsa right here. It's gonna be here. good. It's gonna be good. Now, now how, how how would you use this? I mean, with chips or yeah, what? Yeah, this is actually gonna be served up with corn chips. Oh, corn chips. Yeah, because we're doing gluten that, free. We're doing gluten free. Okay. Gluten free and delicious. Whenever so it can't I'm making, be wheat chips. Corn chips. Wheat. Yeah, you're gonna corn do corn chips. chips. Uh -huh. Corn chips are the okay. one to do, and they got a good variety of all types of corn chips out there. We got them with flaxseed and all different things out there now. So mm -hmm. now, what I like to do with this is um is to put it in a bowl like so, and then put it in, uh, wrap it up, put it in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and let it get cold, nice and cold and chilled, all right? Mm -hmm. And once it's chilled, then all you do is sit back and get your corn chips ready, and you are good to go. Good to go. It's a good beginning to an actual, mm -hmm. um, when we talk about like gluten-free, it's a good appetizer, you know, um, it works real well. Yes, it's a good okay. dish, okay? Now, we'll be having so, that at the end of the show? At the end of the show. Okay. Because I'm going to be looking at our very, very next one. And you know, when we talk about that gluten, once mm -hmm. again, people are saying, I like pasta. What am I going to do? Yeah. I don't have any pasta. This now. knocks out all the pasta. It knocks the whole pasta group out. Or does it? That's the question. That's the question. Well, let's look at the very next recipe. Okay, let's all do right. it. All right. We're going to do penne, regat, uh, tomato toss. It calls for one 16 ounce package of gluten free penne. Arego, which is corn uh, pasta. It calls for three tablespoons of olive oil, three garlic cloves minced, one half cup of scallions chopped, one half cup of onions chopped, three large tomatoes diced, two cups of tomato sauce, or one and a half, I mean one half teaspoon of sea salt, and four basil leaves fresh and chopped. Okay. I love this recipe. I love it because once again, people think you know, they can't do the gluten at all, and so therefore mm -hmm. their pasta is, is out of the game. Yeah. And so, you know, of course, with all the new stuff out there, the new marketing, then of course pasta is back in the game again because you can make the pasta, of course, they can use corn, mm -hmm. and then also rice, brown rice. Okay. And so I've seen both of those out there in all kind of noodles, for the elbow noodle, the uh, f uh, fettuccine noodle. Okay. I've seen the regular uh, spaghetti noodle, and then we're going to be doing a corn noodle, which is the panina Penne, 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 ragat, and the only reason is I, I try to figure out why they call it that. And it was actually because that that particular noodle has a slant to it. So the oh, ragat so is penne, actually slanted. Slant. Okay. So that's oh, it. Okay. That's it. Nothing special. Right. Nothing a little special. homework. Yeah. Now, when we talk about that, before we even get started with our sauce, I want to say to you that when you buy your pasta, your gluten-free pastas, um, they're going to have on there exactly the amount of minutes that it's actually your water's coming to a boil and you're going to cook it. Okay. If it says eight minutes or ten minutes, they mean exactly that. It's just not the same as regular pasta noodles, which take a little bit longer, but they are a shorter cooking time. Okay. And otherwise, they'll get stuck or you'll have some issues with it. So corn, we're doing corn on the show, but there is a brown rice. There's a brown rice pasta noodle out there as well mm -hmm. and a couple other different ones that you can actually try out. But you can still have your pasta. That's why it's called gluten-free and delicious today. Gluten-free and delicious. Yes. Right. Now, I've already got my, my corn uh, pasta noodles already uh, working And here again, that can be purchased in a grocery store? All your grocery stores. Everybody's got the gluten-free thing going on now. I mean, okay. it's everywhere. It's everywhere. I'm not even surprised it's not even in the diet dollar store yet, but it will be so. Yeah, probably uh, already in the dollar store. Such an expensive store. venture, very expensive venture, you know. You say gluten-free is not free. Gluten -free it, it's going to cost free. a little bit more. It's going to cost a <laughs> so, that, That's true. That, that's a good point. I never yeah. thought about that. And gluten-free does not mean free of gluten. Okay, so you're saying that it costs a lot, so therefore that's it's true. not free. We understand that part. That's true. But I don't think that's exactly where you're trying to go with this. No, I'm going with something else. Okay. Because on the label it says gluten-free. A lot of people think that means it's free of gluten. Mm. It's not. The Food and Drug Administration back in 2014 determined that a package can have gluten-free or certified for gluten-free if it has at least 20 parts per million of gluten in our product. Mm. All right? So therefore, um, some people who have serious disease or maybe a gluten sensitivity, well, if you purchase that product in several parts throughout the day, then that can really also have an impact, oh. cumulative yeah. impact, yeah. on the lining of the intestines. Mm. 
So you need to be careful of that as well, even though it says gluten-free. It has to be certified, or sometimes it says uh, sponsored by the Celiac Foundation, something okay, like that. Okay, okay. But sometimes they do not even have the certified gluten-free CF with the circle around it on the package, or sponsored by, like I say, the Celiac Foundation, okay. just as gluten-free. I would be wary of that. But okay. it's not free of gluten. It still has gluten in it, but only uh, 20 uh, parts per million. But uh, cumulatively, it can still add up throughout the day, still have some symptoms as well. Well, okay, that's why we're doing this program. That's why we're doing this program. Why we're doing this program. Mm -hmm. So we know it's not in the corn. No. Okay. Mm -mm. So are corn we going to go ahead on what we're going to do? We're going to make the sauce actually going to go with the pasta. So you're going to actually cut that up for me. Uh, I'm going to dice this. Yeah, or you what? can dice it. Okay. And um, just dice it up. And then we're also going to put in that one as well. We're going to put in a um, fresh garlic which I love fresh garlic. So while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get my skillet ready to go. We're going to go ahead and turn that on. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. So. I don't know how fine. That's uh, fine. That's fine because, you know, I want to have a little substance when I get ready to do that sauce. I'm mm -hmm. going to go ahead and put the, the um, olive oil in. Okay. okay, but it is a multi-billion dollar industry, honey, and um, so it's, it's, it's all It's climbing, it's climbing, it's very expensive, although some of the, because it's been out a while now, it's some of the prices, depending on who's actually producing it, it has gotten a little bit cheaper, yes. okay, but still it's very, very expensive. It's really a, a major... You know, like a lot of things come out on the market that's new. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember some of the different crazes that people got into. Of course, this is not a craze, but unless, unless you don't have a gluten problem. Yeah. Right. But, but uh, uh, a lot of people are, like I said, 1% estimated that are truly have celiac disease. Go ahead and get that garlic ready for me, too, please. And about 17% uh, don't even know it. And uh, there's a lack of underdiagnosis mm -hmm. that people may have celiacs and don't even know it. And haven't been diagnosed. So really, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And the gold standard really is a biopsy with a endoscopy. Go and with, see yeah, if that's, that's the golden. Uh, that's the golden test, gold standard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, but you can have a blood test too that can also determine that as well. Well, I also read in some research that was saying that if you do not have a gluten intolerance uh, or celiac disease and you begin eating the gluten type foods mm -hmm. that can also cause some issues for you as well yeah so you don't want to go there if that's right. not what's happening to yeah. you okay and that's what we call the non celiac gluten sensitivity now you know the other thing too curtis and i'm you gonna, gonna put these together yeah, honey? i'm gonna put them together okay here. the other thing too is that um people you know we've, we've had uh, this talk before Okay. Not about the gluten, but we've had this talk before about carbohydrates. Oh, and we yes. hear over and over yes. again of the low carbs, the no carbs, and all that. So all these are kind of <laughs> in the same circle, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I think people really, when they talk about the low carb, no carb, and that's been going on for quite some time, still hasn't really died down completely. No. People really need to understand the different types of carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. they put all carbohydrates in the same boat. Yeah. So yeah. you have three different types of carbohydrates. You have the simple the complex, and you have the refined. Mm -hmm. But uh, you say, I'm on a no carb. Well, exactly what do you mean? What type of carbs are you not eating? Is it the simple, the complex, or is it the refined? And so they don't really differentiate between all three of them. And so therefore, there's a lot of confusion as far as that is concerned. And so once again, it's not a no carb, the no carb, because carbohydrates, and we've spoken about this before on Abundant Living, carbohydrates actually fuels the body you you can't not go mm. and say you're not going to do carbs you're going to have the good carbs mm. okay which is your fruit and your vegetable kingdom and, all legumes. Right? and your legumes group god's original diet is loaded with carbohydrates yes, yes. genesis 129 genesis 318 it is a carbohydrate rich diet yes yes so yeah. uh, but again it's like an education but um and all that was a booming industry. It's still going on too, but uh, well, now the gluten is now taking over. Well, also, and, and, and the gluten plays a part in it because what's yeah. happening is it just once again knocks the pastas out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when people feel they're not doing a pasta, they're not going to do potatoes. Right. They're not going to do sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not going to do the bean group. Mm -hmm. they, they classify them all in the same group, and they're just not the same, all right? right? They're not the same. Now, surely we need to cut back on them, yeah. Yeah, because it's putting some weight on well, in the, the United States. The, the but different types of carbs. It's the type. It's yeah. the plant-based mm -hmm. all the way is what you want to do. 
So I'm just sauteing okay, this a little bit so. here. And you know what I'm going to have you do? Um, this is, uh, don't it smell good? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And we're going to go ahead and put the green scallions in as well. You just, they have, just have to take their wor our word for it, honey. <laughs> have a spatula. You just get all of the goodies out. Okay. All the goodies out. And this is also a very colorful recipe as well. So we're sauteing until it gets kind of an opaque or a little bit of a clearness in the actual um, onion itself. Mm -hmm. Okay? And what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you slowly pour in the diced tomatoes first. I'm going to move these knives out your way here. Okay. And you're going to slowly pour it in because I don't want it splashing everywhere. So just pour it in slow. All right. Okay. Get all the goodies. All the goodies. I that like pink, yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Red tomatoes. Mmm. All right. And I love the color. I love the color. Here you go. A napkin. Okay. A napkin. You hear me say, here's a napkin? Here's I'll, a napkin. I heard that, baby. <laughs> okay. We're going to go ahead on and put in the tomato sauce. Okay. Uh, slowly. Okay, let me so just... You're backing up a little bit, huh, yeah. baby? Yeah. Let me use this to get all the goodies out. Smells good, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I love pasta dishes. All the goodies that go in there as well. And we're going to. Now, I'm going to just go ahead on and put a little bit of this salt in here now. And basically, we're going to let this simmer for a few minutes. But because we're on 3ABN and we don't have okay. the, the time factor that we're usually uh, on when you're doing it at home, it's going to just cook a little bit longer. Mm. So it's just meshing it all in together. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to make a nice sauce. And one of the things, this is going to be last, so I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle on. You can do it. Sprinkle a little bit of salt over there for me. Okay. Okay. And what's the bay leaf? That's basil. Ba I oh, love basil. basil. I mean, okay. you know. And what you can do with that for me, as I'm just stirring something and going to put the lid on, is to go ahead on and chop this up very fine also. Oh. So chop that up for me. I'll give you your knife back. And now you already know what to do, right? You're gonna put it in a, in a gonna gather it up. Gather, gather it all up. up. Gather it all up. <laughs> I learned from the best. It just honey. is easy. It's just it's just a lot more easier to work on it that way. Yes, it is. And okay. Okay. And that's gonna be I'm gonna be harder. a good student. A good student? Obedient or student. Obedient student. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. So So let me just show them what that pasta. So we got that done. Oh, you smell that? You can smell yeah. that? They smell it? Yeah. Penne. So it's, it's cut in a slant, on a yeah, slant. cut in a slant. And this, of course, this can be in a pasta uh, uh, group, I mean, the grocery store. Oh, yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Would, now, would it say gluten-free? It will say gluten-free. Okay. It will. It will. And you, and like I said, you'll see on there either the word uh, corn or you'll see the word brown rice. Those are the two. Right. Okay. okay. Um, do me a favor. I'm going to actually slowly move this into this skillet, okay? Okay. You said you want me to do your favor. No, I, 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 I didn't know what I was talking about. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm talking yeah, about. I, oh. No, no, I'm going to use this. Okay. Now, I uh, like the sauce because, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this off, make sure it's off completely, okay, and then make sure that one's off completely. And all we're going to do is just, and you're going, the, the reason why you're doing like so much tomato sauce and also the um, diced tomatoes mm. is because this type of noodle, you see how it's made with that cylinder we call mm -hmm. cylinder type of shape, it's going to take those, that sauce and go up inside those noodles and I'm telling you, this is going to be yummy, yummy, mm. really mm. good, okay? So you see it's working out really well and you can mm -hmm. see that you can have your, and they say your cake and eat it too, you can right. have your pasta and right. eat it too, too, yes, even though. You don't though have to give up. You don't have to give pasta, it up, yeah. okay? okay? This is a very attractive dish and once again, as it sits and it soaks up the sauce, Oh wait! It's at the end of this program. It's the so. Way. How long would you let this sit? Um, no, normally, what we, you know, like once again, because we're on the, the set. Normally, what you do is we're going to okay. cook the tomato sauce with all that fixing in it. You're going to cook it for about at least a good 15 minutes, and then you're going to add in this. I'm just doing it a little bit faster here because of the show, and they mm -hmm. get a chance to see what it looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. There you have it. There you have it. There you have it. And we're going to go ahead on take that. The. Uh, oh, okay. So. Gonna take the, that air. You don't have to. 
I like to kind of, hold, let, me, let me do that. I like to kind of sprinkle that. Sprinkle it? it. Yeah. And then I love basil. We grow basil in our yard. And That's right. You know, and this is such a pretty dish, you know. I know all my pasta lovers out there, those who thought they couldn't eat pasta no more, they said, oh, oh, it's on. Yeah, pasta <laughs> it is, on is again. back. Woo, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So that's finished. I'm going to put the lid on top of it because you know what? Speaking of pasta free, pasta and delicious. Gluten free. Gluten free. Gluten free. Yeah. Pasta. <laughs> gluten free, free and delicious. We're going to go to another recipe. Okay. And this is another recipe that's probably gluten free. Yeah, yeah, gluten yeah. Gluten free. Okay, it's called grilled zucchini with sauteed onions. It calls for two medium zucchinis cut on a slant. It calls for two and a half tablespoons of olive oil, one half cup of onions sliced, and one fourth teaspoon of sea salt. Okay, this is a good one. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not care for zucchini. Why is that, baby? I don't know. We did a show one time <laughs> um, that was talking about uh, the whole uh, zucchini group, all the different mm -hmm. squash group. It was mm. called Squash It. Squash It. We yeah, had all the different that. kinds of squash on that show, the pumpkin squash, mm -hmm. and it was called the peanut squash, and peanut squash. Regular, regular pumpkin squash, and zucchini, and all that whole family group. Mm -hmm. Zucchini is one of my favorite vegetables, mm -hmm. okay? And this one I like because I actually have um, created a recipe that uses uh, an actual skillet. Well, you don't have to go out and do, do a barbecue iron. grill, a cast iron skillet. Already got the ridges already Yeah, so you in have the it. lines in and everything. Lines huh? are in it. And so you can actually do your grilling in the house, oh, on the stove. Okay. No, no uh, coals and all that kind of stuff. And going through a bunch of changes, winter, summer, spring, or fall. So for rains, you can go ahead and do right grill. Right here in the house. And you can do all different things in it. But I like to do my vegetables on there, mm -hmm. especially. Okay? okay. Now, this recipe is really easy to do because all I'm going to do is just cut the edges off like so. And I also like to cut this up here. Both ends, mm -hmm. like so. And then, because of the fact that I'm going to do a slanting, I actually like to cut on a slant. Oh. Now, what, what's with the slant thing? It just, it's just, just for, looks better? Yeah, yeah. It's more, people are like, oh, I, I might try that now, since it's like that. Yeah, it might be good. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever it does, you know. Okay, and I'm just going to put these in the bowl. Oh, okay. Okay, and I'm going to do one more, and then I'm going to have you cut my to cut the onions in a circle. Okay, so you're just going to slant it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make no, no, no it's not no set size. It's just that it has a very attractive look when it's slanted versus the other type. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm going to put that in a bowl. Mm-hmm. Like so. Now, this is free of gluten, is that right? <laughs> I mean, it's my understanding. It's definitely gluten free. Zucchini has no gluten it's in it. Definitely gluten free. Definitely okay. gluten free. Now, I'm going to have you do that. Let me tell you what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take the olive oil, okay, because I asked for two and a half tablespoons of olive oil, and I'm going to just pour it over top of this, okay? And then the part that I like is just to just make sure that all of them got oil. Over them. This is what's going to make those lines and ridges when you make it up. Okay. Yeah. Take these circles out. And, uh, uh, yeah, you can take them take them apart for me. I'm going to go ahead and turn my my skillet on. Okay. I usually use this over medium heat. You want to get the skillet hot. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and put the oil in this one. We're also going to saute onions. Sometimes I save a little bit of the um, olive oil because the name of the game is to actually make sure that the skillet itself stays oiled. Okay? Oh, okay. And that's what we're doing. I keep it oiled. When I finish using it, I oil it back again. And that way it stays that way. Because you know, really and truly, what people don't know is you're not supposed to really wash these. Okay. No, these now, why, now, why is that? Well, what? if you wash them, because because the iron and stuff is actually in the p thing itself, it's it can rust. Or, it can rust on you, and then you don't want to rust it because you won't be able to use it after that for real. Okay. So, how, how, so how once I you clean once it? I make it, I just well, see because it's oil on it already, mm -hmm. and then when I get done, I wait for it to cool down, and I take my brush and I brush it. Okay, and any residue, which the zucchini does not have a residue, right. is automatically going to be over on your sides. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, then you just take once again your olive oil and you oil it back down again, 
and then I put plastic over it and I put it away until I'm ready to do something else with it. Mm. Kind of reminds me a lot of uh, when I'm doing waffles with my waffle iron. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of thing. You know, you know, some things if you, you know, they get more seasoned as they are older. All right. Right. Okay. And so with that in mind. You know, sometimes you just want to... Is this called a cast iron? It's cast iron. It's a cast iron skillet. Now now how long have you had that? That's, I mean, it can last uh, for a long time. It, does, it, it lasts forever. It does last forever. Uh, hold up one minute. Let me... I can't chew gum and talk at the same time. So let me go ahead and put that over here. Because I'm going to saute those onions. You got all those onions ready for me? They're ready to go, baby. Okay. So we're going to saute the onions also as well. This is so easy and simple. I usually wait for it to get kind of hot, and it's just about there now. Okay, um, and then I'm going to just take each one of these. I'm going to just lay it on there. Oh, okay. Just lay it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's already been coated with already uh, been coated, olive oil. Already coated them with olive oil. And also, let's move this up. And you want to get those lines like it's been, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a more attractive uh, look to it when you do it this way. Mm -hmm. And it's also, people will say, oh, I think I'm going to try that zucchini. I think I'll try it. So I'm going to do that one first. Let's just get these together first. Okay. And meanwhile, we got this good. We got, we're going to saute those onions. Now, Curtis, tell me some of the things that when people are, are, are experiencing celiac disease, what kind of things, I know you mentioned a couple things, but what kind of things um, happens as they, as they eat as far as uh, consuming it? What goes on? Yeah, well, I said before, this is an autoimmune disorder. Mm -hmm. where the immune system simply attacks the lining of the intestines. And with that, you have all types of uh, problems. Um, it kind of mimics uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's misdiagnosed. That's why people have uh, sometimes symptoms, diarrhea. Uh, you have bloating. You have fatigue. Uh, sometimes people have headaches, increased osteoporosis. And so uh, you may not realize what's going on. Uh, you may be misdiagnosed and uh, irritable bowel syndrome or spastic colon, um, ulcerative colitis, so all of those things. So therefore, you need to have, really have endoscopy and have a biopsy taken or mm -hmm. have an antigen test with about three, two or three different types of antigen blood tests that can confirm it as well. But if you have those symptoms, there may be a celiac disease. And about 17% of people have it and uh, are not even diagnosed. That's the issue. But now that's celiacs. But then you have people who, let's say, had the biopsy, we had the blood test, and said, no, you do not have celiac disease, but when they still eat gluten, barley, rye, and uh, wheat, they still have symptoms. That's when we call that non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So you still have those situations. And so, uh, and that's gonna be up to 60%. And so really, there's no real cure, it just simply eliminate gluten. From the diet. Okay, okay. So you want to make sure that when the package it says certified, gluten free, that's certified. Otherwise, uh, it can still have gluten up to uh, 20 uh, parts per million. So sometimes people are experiencing the bloatiness and, and they think it might be a gluten. So would you recommend they just come off of gluten for a little bit? And yeah, then, again, and then, uh, then, elimination and then diet. Come back okay. on and see. And there's a whole list of, you know, people think of gluten, oh, okay, no more wheat, bread, crackers. I mean, you're talking about soy sauce. It's a whole list of things mm -hmm. that people probably don't even know or consider that's gluten is in that product. Uh, there's a whole list. But again, uh, just do a research, a Google search, and uh, look at the gluten, and you'll be surprised how many foods or ingredients have gluten in it. It's more than just the bread. It's I mean, more that's, than just the bread. That's just the bottom line. So, uh, but uh, just uh, you know, make sure that you eliminate your diet of gluten, and then see how your symptoms subside now, and then you can determine whether or not it could be uh, intolerance to a gluten. Yeah. You know, the thing is that you can try it, and, and uh, you know, if you have not diagnosed, been not diagnosed with it, I've uh, been heard, hearing a lot of quite a few people yeah. that have said that they do uh, think that they're having an issue with it. So then just trying a little bit of it, taking, going off of it, and then, then, you know, trying to go back one thing at a time right, and right. see what's going on, okay? And the main thing, too, that if you do have it, and if it's left unchecked, folks, this can lead to cancer, the phrenics, uh, esophageal cancer, cancer of the intestines, uh, lymphoma. I mean, we're talking about if left unchecked. Um, vitamin, mineral deficiency because the body is not absorbing these nutrients. And then you go into what we call uh, intestinal permeability or better known as simply 
leaky gut syndrome. Hmm. You have another issue with that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all together a different issue as well. So again, if you have some of those symptoms, uh, I'll be uh, mindful to uh, minimum to have a blood test with several antigens. And, uh, but the gold standard is endoscopy where you have a biopsy of the uh, duodenum, the first portion of the small intestine. To well, you confirm can, it either way. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can see that we're moving along here with that. And That's you see good, how yeah. it's actually getting that. Uh, to me, I think it's more of an attractive look to it when it has those yeah, the lines, lines and stuff in that, it. Yeah. You know, it's very, very easy to fix. Not a problem whatsoever. Yes. And, like, you know, I have a little bit of the olive oil. Is it too here? No. Oh. You, uh, the olive oh, oil. Oh, you just need to. Out. Oh, okay. And that puts it back over there. So oh, okay. It'll calm back down. And I will, I will just go ahead and turn it down a little bit. Yeah. I don't want it too high. I don't want them calling the fire department. Call it down there. Okay. Okay. This and good. we're sauteing. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I'll saute this and saute the onions as well on right. here. So we don't okay. have the time for all that. So, but you get the gist of it. How nice it looks. Mm -hmm. Very That's attractive. A nice, nice eye appeal, yeah, mm -hmm. with the lines. And all you need is a little bit, just a little bit of, um, you see where it's right there? All you're doing is just do this. When you do that, oh, just coat the, put it back um, over just there. keep it coated. You have to keep it coated, it coated, keep it coated. periodically. Yes, okay. All right, so we got that finishing up. Um, I'm going to I'm going to stop with these right here. They'll get a chance at the end of the show to see the end of that. Meanwhile, I'm over here sauteing them onions, getting the onions mm -hmm. ready, because they're going to be a part of this dish as well. Okay. Okay. Now, so after the onions, you're going to put the onions on top of the... The onions are going to go on top at the end of it. Okay. And you'll see it at the end of the show as well. And so we actually are going to move into that last recipe. Okay. All right. And then we're going to move into the last recipe, which is actually summer, fresh summer fruit kebabs. It calls for seven uh, strawberry halves. It calls for two medium peaches cubed. Uh, two uh, kiwi fruit cubes, ten black grapes, two cups of pineapple chunks, one tablespoon of canola oil, one teaspoon tablespoon of maple syrup, and three mint leaves, fresh and minced. Okay, now this is a real easy, quick recipe. It's a kebab. I love it. I love it. I love it. Fruit kebab. So what you're going to do is you're going to start on those pineapples over there, and I'm going to start because we're actually going to do all these things in chunks, okay? Pineapples you're gonna it, in chunks. You're going to make chunks because this is, this is a no-cooking one here. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to get now, that. No there. gluten in this, right? No gluten in this, okay? We got you. And you're gonna, these are going to be chunks because they're going to go on top of the shish kebab, so you want to... Okay. 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 And let's see. Uh, I think I did. How big are chunks? This? Uh, it's got to be able to go on a stick. Okay. Are these too big, honey? Yeah, baby. Oh. Cut that in half. There you go. Cut it in half. Okay. Okay. There you go. Now, this is gluten free, correct? <laughs> Yep. I'm just checking. Gluten free. Because nowadays you never know. Uh, That's funny how they got it. You should have took a picture of that gluten free water. I should have. Yeah, you should have. Probably do it again, though. And we're going to just put them in there. Okay. I think that's enough because we're going to have quite a bit there already as it is. So I'm going to put this away. And hold it and put this over Whoa. here on the side. Oh, oh. Go ahead. okay, here you go. Okay. There's a, okay, got those. That, that the has the core. Okay. In that one. We already got the grapes ready to go. Okay, so. And the strawberries are going to be the last thing on there, so we're not okay. going to worry about the strawberries. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin kiwi. Oh. Don't forget the kiwi. Now, uh, we'll cut the two ends. Mm -hmm. All right. And then... Uh, I have a shorter knife there. This will work, honey. And I'm just going to take and take the skin off of it. And I know it's a lot easier way to do this, but we're just going to do this for right now. I'll take the skin off. Um, Why don't we do this? You, you know what? Get your thing so you can get ready to take. Let's go ahead and make that. I'll do the, I'll do the kiwi because we're only going to do a few of them. Oh. All right. What you're going to put together is you're going to put the canola oil together along with that maple syrup in that container right there. Is in this front one? Of you. No. Bit, this one? You can do it in that one. Okay. Because okay. that's going to go over top of it. Not that it needs it because it is a summertime. And so because of that, you're not going to have to really worry about it that much. Oh, this is going to be what we're going to You're going to base it. That's right. Uh, that's right. Okay. Canola oil. What's this? Maple syrup? And maple syrup. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to whisk. Whisk it. Whisk it. Okay. okay. And we're only going to do a few kebabs on this show here, so they at least get to see what it looks like. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, but if they do what we're saying as far as putting all the stuff together, then they'll have a nice amount of kebabs, which mm -hmm. you'll have okay. at the end. Okay. We'll probably do another program on gluten, uh, kind of like an update. Uh, uh, the Gluten for Punishment Part 2. Maybe so. That's, maybe. that's been over 10 years ago. Maybe we'll do it in the, um, in the Abundant Living yeah. series. How about that? Because uh, it seems like it's not going away. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and start threading that because I don't want to run out of time and Where's what's going to happen. Okay, okay. For six so, minutes. Okay. okay, now, so. So, what we're doing, what we're going to do is we're going to get, you got your three kebab sticks right there. Okay, I got okay. my three. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually start putting them, whatever your co combinations. Now, the last one we're going to do is uh, to tell you uh, strawberry. Now, should we take off the stems? Of nope, the I want all that to stay on for decoration. So, Oh, so we're eat, eating no, the stems? No, when they're oh. ready to eat it, they take it off, honey. That's just the decoration. Oh, so okay, keep it they'll on be there, fine. Right? Yep. Okay. So, okay. this All right, is, so we what got we, we're going to be working with this, these group of this fruits. This is the group. That's it right this there. This is the group. You give me this, and you can give me that uh, pineapple right there. Oh, okay. Put it on there. I'll just put that away. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, it's time to. Okay, you can give me that knife there too, and those dishes. Just kind of clear it up. A little oh, bit let's clear it up. Okay, yeah. let me. So that's going to be our sauce that goes on top. Okay. Let me take this off. Okay. Put all that, all that away, because now it's time for the threading. Okay, time for the threading. Time for the threading. Okay, and yeah. so basically, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm going to put a pineapple on first. Now, so I'm going to do something different, so... I'm going to put a peach. A peach, uh, peach first, and then a... Two kiwi. Pineapple. You do them long ways, like that, yeah. Long ways. Grape. I'll do a grape. So we got this thing down packed about as far as what goes on with the, um, um, yeah. gluten. Yeah, a lot of people simply are under diagnose honey mm -hmm. and don't even know it and so they have some repercussions down the line so you have those symptoms I put another grape on and I'm going to top mine off as I'm listening to you I'm gonna to top it off with the strawberry okay and then we're going to oh you always do each fruit at least twice is that the you key can, or yeah, yeah. so yeah. let's see now I have to go and order this? No, you can actually do any kind of combination you want to do. It depends on, you know, where you want to go with that. We just know the strawberry is going to be the last thing on there about that. Oh, okay. And this is so good. Let me see. Now I got mixed I think you up. got quite a, Why don't you go ahead on No, wait that. a minute. I want, I want the kiwi and then, uh, and then the strawberry. It was top of, no, no. The strawberry is the end, baby. It will be. No, I don't want, but you only have six strawberries and there's only six sticks. That's why I said do the strawberry last. Oh. The strawberry's the last one. Okay. Okay, so take that, take, okay, well, you already did it now, so. Oh, we put a hole in it. Yeah, you did. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. Please forgive me. Okay. Okay, let's do some more of that. So, you got what, three sticks and three strawberries. That's why I said, well. Oh, you got, okay, so one stick won't have a strawberry. <laughs> Okay, that would be mine. So I'll be, I messed up. All right. Okay. So kiwi. We'll do one more. And peach. And. We'll start with um, grapes on this one. And we'll do double grapes. Double grapes. And another kiwi. kiwi. And then we'll have peach. another pineapple. Pineapple. And you do your move it down a little bit, babe. Move it, move your, um, oh, move it down okay. so you can. Yeah. There you go. I'm gonna run in. We're looking, All right, how we looking? looking pretty good, baby. Okay. Okay. I'll do my last one. I'm gonna start with a. See peach. So we have thoroughly covered that gluten issue. Yes, we Talking have. Talking about gluten, and you can still have other things you can eat. Still have uh, your tummy full. Mm -hmm. and look at all the gluten things out there on the market. Someone asked me about making um, a gluten um, bread, you know, making my own bread and stuff. I, I, I'm, not and why not? I'm not interested in doing it. It's too much work. I'm not doing all that. <laughs> 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 I'm not doing all that. We ain't time for all that. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, since we got this one sitting up here looking kind of different, we'll just put some grapes on it to the top. How about that? And I'll put a grape on there. You see here. There you and go. Okay. Oh, God, this kiwi came off. Let's put it up. There you go. Okay. Oh, the kiwi came off. So let's move these down. All right. You can have fun with this, and you can have your children do it with you. They will love that. And it has a little sauce that goes on. Like I said before, you don't have to have the sauce on it because, um, you, you know, it's already sweet. It, I usually like to make this up in the summertime as well. Mm -hmm. But it makes a very, very attractive dish. Mm -hmm. It's very, very uh, good. I put it in the refrigerator and get it cool. Mm -hmm. And after we've had the whole meal, then that's going to be the dessert. Mm. We we'll actually have that as a now, dessert. Now, you can put over that like a sauce or something. That's just what we already did. We already made oh. the sauce up. That's the maple and the... Um, you um, do that you know, after... That goes... That actually, you actually baste it on there before you put it in the refrigerator. Oh. And make it cool. Okay. And then also at the end, you're going to sprinkle on... And we have peppermint leaves. It's going to go on top of that. They have that nice coolness that goes along with it as well. Mm. Oh, okay. So we've talked yeah. a lot on this program about mm. what's going on as far yeah. as the gluten is concerned. And... Um, There's a lot of products out there. A lot of companies... Um, I'm not going to mention any names, though, but there are a lot of companies out there. A certain company, to a Super X Brew uh, Foundation, has a lot of information about that, and uh, a lot of brands out there that are trusted mm -hmm. as far as uh, dealing with uh, gluten as well. So, but they want to make sure that they are certified with the CF, with the circle around it, or some type of a Glutet Foundation Association or sponsored by certain, certain uh, situations or uh, associations with celiac disease. And once again, no. we want to make sure that you've been checked to make sure that you do have that, rather than, you know, a lot of people are saying, I'm gluten-free or I'm celiac, I got celiac disease. You know, yeah. I just think I do. I'm not really sure. A lot of self-diagnosis. But you want to go and do the check before you do anything else. Yeah. Um, the whole uh, area of the gluten-free out there is special places in the supermarket. Um, very expensive side. I mean, I've seen bread um, that's made with corn or, or spelt, and it's actually very, very high, too. So just watch what's going on. But make sure you're okay. Yeah. So if you're interested in um, my wife's cookbooks, uh, I think we have a role at this time. And then after that, we'll come back and show you the finished product. So stay by. If you would like to contact the Akins to find out more about their ministry, or if you'd like to invite Curtis and Paula to present their seminars in your area, then you can contact them at Abundant Living, Post Office Box 2873, Huntsville, Alabama 35804. That's Abundant Living, Post Office Box 2873, Huntsville, Alabama 35804. You can call 256-859-1982. That's 256-859-1982. You may also order their products or get their recipes online at AbundantLivingTV.org. That's AbundantLivingTV.org. Hello, I'm Jason Bradley, and we love to hear from those of you who take time to write and call us. A viewer in Brooklyn, New York wrote us to say, I've been watching 3ABN for several years now and want to congratulate your entire team as you celebrate your 30th anniversary. I love you all and may God bless each and every one of you real good as you continue work for him. May this gospel reach the ends of the earth so Christ can come and take his faithful children home. I hope to be one of them. Here's a letter from a viewer who enjoyed our music special, Hallelujah, We're Home at Last. They wrote, As I listened to the choir and Mr. Larry Goss, I just kept wondering, where would we be today if there were no 3ABN? Where would we be if there hadn't been a group of believers to proclaim this message to a lost and dying world? Where would we be if Jesus hadn't touched so many people to provide the funds to keep 3ABN going and on the air all these years? We simply must do all we can through the blessings the Lord has bestowed on each of us. So many of you tell us that 3ABN has brought you back to the Lord like this viewer who writes from North Brunswick, New Jersey. I want to thank you for teaching me present truth, she says. I have been a Christian since I was 17 and I'm 74 now but I was rebaptized last August and joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I've been watching 3ABN since we got cable in 2008, and I thank John Stanton and John Lomacang on house calls for answering my questions using the Bible. 
I also want to thank Doug Batchelor for explaining to me what happens when we die, just as I was asking that question while going through a bout of breast cancer. Thank you for being there for me. And finally, this letter that says, I left the church at an early age, but was rebaptized from watching 3ABN. We pray for you each morning and evening because you are truly like family to us. We can't always get to church, but thank God we have 3ABN. This is truly God's station. I want to thank all of you who pray for this ministry and support financially each month. And if the Holy Spirit impresses, please send your tax-deductible gifts to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. Thank you for your love and support, and may God bless you all during this new year. Well, we are completely finished with the program. Teamwork. Gluten-free and delicious. Gluten for punishment. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That this is really a, a show that you wants all gluten-free um, items right. and things you can eat. Once again, plant-based. I always it say plant-based. You can enjoy your meals. Yep. When I went off, I, I said the word spelt. I didn't mean spelt. Spelt's not a part yeah, of that group. Okay. okay. So we got that all cleared up. Okay. Make sure it just says uh, certified. Gluten free. That's what I'm saying. All right, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So uh, let's go around the circle, honey. Let's go and around see what the we circle. Have. We made a mango salsa that we're serving mm. up with our tortilla chips. Looking mighty okay. good. Okay. We did also a penne uh, ragget um, okay. noodle, and it had all that fixing, everything mm. with it. You know, looks good, baby. And then that basil's on it. Then we did. We actually grilled our zucchini, mm. and we smothered it with onions. Okay? Yes. And then we actually went to our dessert, which is actually kebabs, so fresh summer fruit kebabs. Summer Strawberries, fruit kebabs. kiwi, and pineapple, and Has peaches. Has a nice glow in it. What'd you put on that? That's the a sauce that we made up. Oh, that's right, the sauce. Yeah, yeah, the sauce okay. was done with good, that as well, good. you know. So it, uh, it's always good. It's always quick and easy. Once mm -hmm. again, not a lot of work that has to be done to it. Mm -hmm. You can make it up, and your family's going to be very, very surprised. I like to serve that pasta up with also with some garlic. Okay. And do God as well. Well, as always, we're going to close out. Jesus said, John 10, 10, I come, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. <laughs>